Welcome to the Mike Clegg YouTube podcast. This section is topical football, and I want to welcome Neil Bailey. Hi, Neil Bailey is a good friend of mine. He worked with me at Sutherland Football Club. He was a coach at Man United. He's got a brilliant history in football. And today we're just talking about the Euros. We're going to talk about Neil's history being at the World Cup in Russia and also the upcoming uh, Nations League, which is out in Holland. So, so Neil, this is like it's an international break. There's no games in the Premier League or the Championship. And is this a type of um, every six weeks or so something you look forward to, or do you prefer more the, the, the Premier League? Uh, no, I, I, you've no preference one way or the other. It, there's still League One and League Two going on, and we have lads who are working on courses who might be in League One and League Two clubs. So it's a great opportunity to to watch football at that level, which we try and do anyway. Anybody who's on your course, you try and watch the teams playing. Exactly. So Neil ne works for the PFA. That's the coaching organisation. Trans get ex footballers and still footballers now um, on the courses so they become the best coaches they can be and like you say Neil even for the fans in general it's a great opportunity maybe they're not watching the Man United or the Man City you know go and support your grassroots team it might be Curzon Ashton it might be Salford Football Club or it might even be the other teams Accrington's or your Oldham Athletics it's a great time to go down there and give them support so yeah I agree with you and maybe that should be looked at more by the fans yeah because they'll see some great games yeah. I've seen some f fantastic games this season I remember watching uh, Morecambe and Tranmere earlier this season it finished 4-3 it was a great game you know and exciting and Tranmere were ahead 3-1 Morecambe got it back to 3-3 lost it in the last minute there's some fantastic football going on in the in the lower leagues yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely true. I, I Recently this year, I went on a course, a scouting course called the PFSA, and I went down to Charlton. Six or seven Charlton players were doing their uh, their course, the lads who was injured, because they want to become scouts in the future. We watched Charlton versus Accrington Stanley. It was a great game, and you got that old-fashioned feel of the game, really, rather than it being a little bit, you know, Premier League cameras. It just had that smell. You could almost you hear the players shout at each other, and there's the smell of a normal game, you know? Yeah, you can't say proper football, but I, I do know what you mean. Uh, there's, there's not as many there, but you still get an atmosphere. The fans are still just as passionate, yeah. not as big in numbers, but just as passionate for the teams. And and like I said, the, the, there's players, some really good young players up yeah. and coming who might get an opportunity. And you've still got the experienced players who either dropping down to that level or uh, played at that level and like I said I've seen some really good games at, at League 1 and, and League 2 this season well it's interesting I just listening and jumping in mind I do an MUTV do a lot of um, commentary for, regarding them and at that level that's where the lads go on loan now a lot they get a lot of loan players drifting down the teams and what you're really seeing is really probably the best players in five, six, seven, eight years time. So it's great for the, the local um, grassroots and the, the League One, League Two team to get these players to see what quality it is going to be in the Premier League in the future. Exactly. And, and not just that, it, it, the players who might go out on loan for experience with a view to getting in their own first team higher up. It's a great experience for them to play real football in front of a crowd, the different mm. pressures. And, and it's just another route now for, for clubs to develop the players. There's still reserve team football, but there's obviously a big debate about that, and is that preparing them for first team? Mm. So a lot more are going out on loan now, and and, and trying to uh, add that as part of the development. And it's definitely almost a gap in the market, which I think has been really utilised, especially from teams like Chelsea, where you look at the under 23s now, and I think it looks a little bit of a younger age group, and it's almost like the stepping stone is the 16s, 18s, 23s go out on loan and then get the opportunity. So, with a there's a good example of that. I mean, you, you've mentioned Chelsea. There's a good example at, at my local team, Wigan. Yeah. Uh, Reese James, who's uh, a professional at, at Chelsea, yeah. but has come out to get first team experience at Wigan. Uh, I've seen him play at right back, where he's, he's had some really good games. Mm. He's, he's been playing in centre midfield. It's great experience for him, and you know. When he, where he goes from here we don't know he's, he's playing he's on a loan a long loan at, at championship level 
whether he goes and loan at Premier League but mm -hmm. it could be part of his stepping stone to get into the first team exactly and all these lads ultimately um, want to play for their nation you know I was lucky enough to play for England under 21s and it was a great achievement and to get that cap I still got it at home in my England shirt it was a great achievement but it was international week and uh, I think the under 21s played yesterday and yeah. tonight England are playing mm -hmm. the Czech Republic and, and that's in Group A an interesting league I think got a good chance of winning and qualifying we've got England um, Bulgaria Czech Republic Montenegro and Kosovo so I don't see any real issues in that do you that maybe tonight's the toughest game uh, it, well everyone will tell you that they're all tough games look at can we say Scotland well, yesterday we'll get to Scotland in a minute we'll sorry, so, that, yeah. so it just shows that there, there are no easy games at, at international level at all uh, England naturally will be trying to build on the successful World Cup they had in uh, in Russia. Uh, I think the one or two players injured out of the squad, mm -hmm. but I think Gareth's shown uh, a real confidence in young English players yeah. as well. Yeah. So if players drop out, there's now a nucleus of of young players beneath that who've mm -hmm. had success at the junior levels who he's quite confident at, at throwing into the seniors and giving them an opportunity. Yeah, I almost feel like we're in a, a bit of a golden era for English football. You look at the successes of the other levels, under 16, 17, 18, going through the different levels there. You was lucky enough. You, you went to the World Cup, didn't you? you? You went out to Russia. Was you a part of that? Yes, we were. Uh, all, the, all the coaching department went. We went at different stages, covered different groups, different... <laughs> so the way we did it was in different continents. So one group looked at the African countries yeah. uh, some groups looked at South American countries who did you look at we looked at the at Western Europe really so we had England Belgium uh, uh, who else did we look at in that one Germany right. France so which Poland. games did you actually watch then we watched uh, well the England game was England Colombia which yeah. was a good game we watched Russia and Spain which was a fantastic experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Russia got that nil-nil draw, won on penalties, and incredible. Eh? You could sense the crowd and the team thinking, "Wow!" The longer it went, we might get something here. And then afterwards, on the on the journey back to the hotel, Moscow was alive was, and bouncing. Yeah. Families were out and just celebrating the nation, getting a, a good result. That must be awesome experience. to be a part of that experience. Not only in England, but like you say, being a part of Russia and then having that um, great victory there. And there's how was that experience? Was you worried before going out there? There was maybe a talk of hooliganism or being unsafe, but you obviously enjoyed it. Yeah, the, the rad, but you can't not follow the the stories and and the the things that had been that. Uh, the bit at the Euros in Marseille, mm. and but I've got to say it was the it was well organised. The, the transport from from getting in and out of games, the thousands that were there, you're you're in the public transport. We never waited above a minute for a metro, so you were the, the, you know you, the, it was so well organised that the, you could and Moscow itself. Uh, the atmosphere, the restaurants, the people were, were so friendly. Yeah. It, it was a it, it was a, a really positive experience <coughs> on and off yeah. off the field. We're well, certainly not Putin can pull the strings, don't we? <laughs> so so anyway. I, I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> so we got to um, um, section B um, in the Euros this year. We've got um, Portugal, um, Ukraine, and Serbia seem to be the the, the big teams in in that um, section. So what are your thoughts for Ronaldo Portugal? Yeah, well, we, 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 we might get a good look at them. This summer, we've got the Nations League that yeah. England qualified for in the semi-finals now. Uh, there's Holland, Portugal, Switzerland and England. So we'll we'll probably get a good look at them this summer and see yeah. uh, be able to analyse their strengths. We'll finish on that on the Nations League. It's pretty an interesting competition. I think a lot of people have been mixed up really, but it all, all even means it's a new competition. We'll yeah. talk about that at the end. Because, yeah. yeah, I think Portugal will get through that league relatively easy. Um, Group C, there's the Netherlands, who did qualify for the World Cup Germany and Northern Ireland and um, Northern Ireland had a good win yesterday yeah. against Estonia
Estonia. Michael O'Neill's team um, beat Estonia 2 0. My good friend Paul Walsh, I don't think you knew him from Sunderland, but he, he's there as a sports scientist doing an yeah. absolutely brilliant job at Northern Ireland and also for Sunderland. And um, I do hope Sunderland um, get promoted this year, so that's great. So, tough league though, Northern Ireland to get um, out of that. that that's... Oh, it'll be tough. They had, they, they had a good start last night. Uh, Netherlands had a good win, they were 4 0. Mm. You know, uh, Premier League Depay got a couple of goals. Van yeah. Dijk and uh, Wijnaldum from Liverpool. Not a bad score, team, eh? So they'll be they'll be coming back strong. Yeah. Germany are in a little bit of a transition period. I think they're mm. talking about losing some of their experienced players, bringing some younger ones in. Uh, we, we saw them last year at, at the World Cup, and uh, it's a thin line. They had a, they dominated the three games they played. They dominated and couldn't finish. They mm. just couldn't get goals. And, and went out of the first stage, the defending champions. So they're in a little bit of a transition period. It'll be interesting to see how they're, they're doing the Euros. Yeah, then we're going to Group D, which is Ireland, um, Denmark, and uh, uh, Switzerland. It's, 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 I think that's a possible to get out of that um, that league there. And they've got a new manager now, Mick McCarthy. Uh, we all we both know um, Roy Keane and uh, Martin O'Neill there now at Nottingham Forest and doing a good yeah. job there. And they've moved on. Mick McCarthy's got in. And Wigan connection for yourself and Wigan I played for Wigan as well and is um, Andy Liddell is their fitness coach uh, right, yeah, yeah. he's down there he was with Mick at um, Ipswich and now he's over in Ireland they got a chance of getting out of that league I think they could do yeah again it's 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 interesting Switzerland have got the, uh, have done a lot of good work at the youth areas of the of the uh, development teams and have had good success in recent years so if, if some of them are getting a taste no they'll I wouldn't underestimate them but oh. you, you, you would be hoping that Ireland would get through that yeah going to Group E we've got Wales and they've got Croatia and um um, Slovakia in that so again they got a right chance obviously we both know um, Giggsy and Wales have got Slovakia I think tomorrow um, you actually saw Van Giggs the, the other so week, this yeah. week I was in at Carrington this week on a, a another course well supporting one of the academy coaches on his uh, on his air licence and Wales had trained at Carrington this yeah. week so I managed yeah. to grab uh, five minutes with uh, with Ryan and they had that f it was the night before the friendly uh, against Trinidad which mm. it was a late winner but again Ben Woodburn a young mm. up and coming player who got the winning goal I think they'd rested one or two probably saving them for this weekend so he, he was he sounded quite confident on, uh, on, on the prospects and uh, we certainly hope they come through as well yeah, good. We'll keep an eye out on that game. That goes to Group F with Spain, Sweden, and Norway. Um, Spain, we know, is a really good team. Sweden, Norway, Nordic countries up there. And, uh, interesting. Do you think Spain have we've got enough to dominate that? Uh, again, they're in a little bit of a transition, aren't they? They've lost all these established uh, internationals. They probably didn't quite do as well as they thought in the in the World Cup yeah, this year yeah. uh, so they'll want to come uh, come back flying in this tournament so I think you'd expect them to do well yeah yeah Group G not an interesting group really um, Poland and Austria are probably the, 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 the bigger teams in that and uh, I'm sure they'll compete for first place there any thoughts on Poland and Austria well again Poland was one of the teams we saw in uh, in Russia the finish they didn't do particularly well I think their expectations were quite high they'd mm. had a good qualifying campaign didn't quite produce at the uh, at the tournament itself uh, they've got a new coach in place so he'll still be establishing his, his new ideas so it, again how will they bounce back Austria again had a good spell Alaba from, uh, from Bayern a really top player so I think uh, They'd be the uh, pick out teams at the moment. Yeah. Group H, obviously, it looks like France is going to dominate that one, so we're not going to touch on France. You know, not too pleased with the way they be, be, behave recently at um, Old Trafford, Paris Saint Germain, and the fans there. So they're not really my good book, so we'll skip past not? that group. No, not oh, interested. Mbappe no, is a good point. Go on then. Go on. France, with it, again, one of the teams we covered in, uh, in Moscow. And. Uh, Naturally and quite rightly, everybody's highlighting their attacking play and yeah. Mbappe and Griezmann and, and these players. 
you were a defender. You would have loved the way they defended in that oh, yeah. tournament. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they hardly, apart from the one game where they conceded against against Argentina, the high scoring game. Other than that particular match, they hardly conceded a chance. Mm. So the organisation of the team and the work they put in, Pogba, we know all his his attributes and strengths. The the shift he put in off the ball in that tournament. Really caught the eye, so I'm, I'm disagreeing with you a little bit. No, I, well, I quite well, admire no, France. You know what I'm saying? Not, just yeah, the I'm supposed to be. I mean, France did the World Cup yeah. winners. You know, yeah. they'll probably kick on and be very, very strong. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, they could even win this again, of course. And, and we know they've got some very good players. They do the raw speed and pace of Mbappe, Pogba. Or he, you know, he dominated that World Cup, and they got some brilliant defence there. You know, we, we just hope France don't do that well, really. You know, <laughs> but we, we know France are a brilliant team and, and kick yeah. on from there. You well. know, so we don't need to. Support them more. No. So then the next um, league uh, I is Scotland, Russia, and Belgium. Tough league again, you know, and, and obviously it's Scotland had a very difficult um, result last night against Kazakhstan, who I think was something like 70 places below in the world rankings, and they got beat comprehensively 3 0. It's a tough one to take, I imagine, for the Scots. Definitely. Uh... It just proves the point of no easy, no easy games mm. at, at whatever level. You can't underestimate anybody. And, and I know Alex McLeish was putting that theory forward before mm. the game. You know, we have to be at our best because they do. And, and Scotland are in a, a period where they've, you know, last night they won quite a lot of players making debuts mm. and it, it's, a, it's a new team almost. So it's not easy, uh, but I'm sure they'll want to, to bounce back. But but that is a tough group. You know, again, Russia, we mentioned earlier about, you know, we saw them at the World Cup. Belgium, you know, but for France in the semi-finals, mm. I mean, I saw the Belgium-Brazil game. We we were actually at that game, and what a what a job they they did that night mm. on Brazil. Mm. So with the players they've got available, uh, I'm sure Belgium will expect to go far in the, in the Euros again this year. I think Belgium this year was a great chance to like oh, last year was a great chance to win the World Cup, and they're such a small nation, but such a, a, a amount of top top players who they're producing at this moment it's uh, quite remarkable really it is yeah and you know we've we've got evidence of that in uh, in this region haven't we yeah. with uh, with Lukaku and uh, last week I watched uh, Tielemans one of the younger players yeah. he's, he's now at Leicester he's a good player Hazard, De Bruyne we've got De Bruyne, on, the, on our doorstep yeah. so as individuals they've got a, a really good uh, group of players yeah. and uh, at the World Cup Roberto Martinez and his assistant Graham yeah. Graham Jones uh, they, they, they worked a lot on the, the team uh, the team play as well and, and like I said the, the highlight was that, especially that first half against Brazil it was an incredible performance yeah I think Belgium the, the, the players are magnificent Roberto Martinez I was lucky enough to play with him at Wigan another Wigan connection to yourself yeah. and he, he always knew that he had something special about him and um, he, he's, he's done an amazing job with them and I suppose it's a bit like the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thing with Man United you know you've got such good players just like them express themselves don't be too restricted make sure they understand the game plan and it can sometimes look after its own self yeah it can uh, and, and I don't think it's just let them enjoy themselves and go out there is a there's quite a structure oh, yeah. behind that uh that they work hard on, you know, they, they had to have done, you know, for the uh, the Brazil result, mm. there was a, a real plan and method behind that, that they, they obviously worked on probably a limited time at that particular tournament from game to game, mm. but certainly over, the, over a period, they, they've probably put a lot of time into that. And the last group, J, uh, and the major teams are Italy and Greece, and uh, I think Italy, well, they, they wasn't in the World Cup themselves, was there? No, they didn't qualify so, this year. I no, mean, them has no. been a very passionate um, um, country regarding the football. Must have been oh, devastated about that, and I'm sure they want to bounce back from that. They would certainly will. Uh, and Greece, not well, it's longer than we're probably thinking. Who won? They won the Euros, didn't That's they? Right, yeah. With that team, uh, very well organised team, have uh, defended quite well that that tournament mm. and. and Managed to go on and win it, but yeah, Italy. It'll be interesting to see them. They've, they've, there's some young, good young players now coming coming into the team, mm. so I'm sure they'll be looking to uh, 
qualify and then do well in the finals. Yeah, so that's pretty much a wrap on the Euros and what's happening this week and for the next you know, 18 months or so. And you've been to the World Cup and you love that experience. And like you said, in the summer, it's the Nations League, which I was, we touched on before. It's been an interesting... I think some people have been playing it down, some people have been playing it up. But ultimately in the summer, I think it's this summer coming, it's England, Portugal, um, Switzerland and Holland. They're going to battle out to see who wins that. Yeah, it's a, they're in the semi-finals of the yeah. tournament. So, uh, like I said, with Holland's result last night, they'll they'll they're emerging and and developing. England, as we know, well, I suppose it depends who gets to the Champions League final. The Champions League final, something like five days before the semi-finals of the really? Nations League. Okay. So we have four teams in yeah. in the in the quarterfinals, and we saw how do we who's available, what will happen. Yeah. What preparation will that be for the teams? From England's point of view, like I said, I don't think they need to be too concerned, but they could very well lose some major players mm. quite a short time before the uh, the tournament. But the way Gareth's preparing the team, he's, he's shown a lot of confidence in the young players and it could be a good opportunity for players to emerge. I just think it would be brilliant to, for England to finally win something again after such a long time, even if it's the Nations League, because it just continues that good feeling the nation's got about themselves. If that can then overspill into the Euros, overspill into the next World Cup, yeah. who knows? We might be picking that amazing trophy up again one day. It develops confidence, if nothing else, and, yeah. and as you know, confidence breeds confidence, yeah. and they've had that success with the, 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 the groups below who've won the World Cup and the Euros and mm. and once you get a taste of that as you know you want you want a little bit more don't you okay. so it hopefully the uh, the senior team can get the benefit of that in tournaments to come of course you well that's a wrap really I just want to say thank you for Neil for coming down it's been a pleasure. pleasure and there will be a, a Neil Bailey big podcast 45 minutes so, so look out that in the future and uh, enjoy this international break if you're not going to football and um, support England Scotland Wales Northern Ireland and you know enjoy the international footballs 